Swiss watchmaking has brought us some of the most impressive pieces of mechanical art ever made. But it's not all cake and ice cream, because for every Philippe Dufour simplicity, there's an absolute hanging turd that needs to be dropped down an abandoned mine shaft and backfilled with concrete. Today, I present to you the top 10 worst watches of all time. Stay to the end to see number 10 because, well, make sure you've got a barrel of eye bleach on hand. To set the scene, I'm going to pick such low hanging fruit that it's already dropped from the tree, gone rotten and been trodden into the ground with a dog ridden shoe. I am, of course, talking about crowd favourite Invicta, a watchmaker so overtly allergic to good taste that it had its tongue surgically removed just to be sure. This masterful piece from the Reserve Collection, a name that was banned as the dictionary definition of irony for being too literal, is not only the size of a landmine, it also leaves anyone who experiences its power desperately hoping for a swift and painless death. There's not a single thing about this watch that hasn't been designed to upset children, scare pets and kill the elderly. Some say it was created in a chemical warfare lab by scientists who didn't survive the process. My favourite thing about life is the ability to spend most of it not thinking about how one day it's all going to end and that 99% of the stuff you always dreamed of doing will inevitably remain unexperienced. You know why? Because being dead sucks. The Ticker Death Watch, however, seeks to right that unexpected wrong and make sure that every waking moment of the day is spent counting down the hours and minutes until you turn into medical research. Literally. Through, quote, a simple calculation and questionnaire, the Ticker Watch offers a likely date for your death to, rather suspiciously, the nearest second. What's next? A watch that counts down to your first cancer diagnosis. I'm all for positive thinking. Reinforcing your beliefs with a positive mental attitude is a powerful way to turn failure into success and is a go-to practice for the business elite. This must be something the team at William Wang and read in a newspaper they were sleeping under because they have bundled up that philosophy into what can only be described as a watch. This is the William Wangen Born to be a Winner 01, and it is every bit as crap as you'd hope. Forged from the finest bits of tin foil and toilet paper, it couldn't be any more disgusting if you found it on the wrist of a month-old corpse in the height of summer. The more astute of you will have noticed that this is model number one. The success of this masterpiece clearly warranted another 14 editions. Have you ever wondered what might happen if you were able to absorb the nightmares of the most tortured souls of the worst Victorian asylums and then somehow fashion them into a watch? Penmaker Monty Grappa did, and the chaos is the net result. Scoring a nuke it from space out of 10 on the horror scale, the chaos combines everyone's favourite things, skulls and snakes, to create a case that completely ruins what is otherwise perfectly rubbish watch. It's the watch equivalent of your doctor making your broken arm better by dipping the whole thing in acid. Rumour has it that if you bring the watch up to your ear and listen carefully to the skull, you can quietly hear it whispering, kill me, kill me. The next category isn't so much a watch as it is a bunch of watches. Thanks to the great work of esteemed scientist Marie Curie, it was discovered that radioactive materials, such as radium, could be used to excite a phosphor and generate a glow. And things that glow are cool. This new discovery became the wonder kid of basically everything. People could be found holding radium, covering themselves in radium, drinking radium, and of course painting watch dials with radium. At last, the night was no longer the enemy of someone trying to see what the time was at half past two in the morning. I'll tell you what these new fangled radium watches were the enemy of though, the general health and well-being of the unfortunate souls that were exposed to it. Turns out, and Marie Curie didn't figure this bit out until much later, to her own unfortunate demise, radium is unbelievably deadly. From long-term cancers to disfiguring necrosis, the workers who handled and applied this horrific material to watch dials found themselves wishing they'd never been born. Apparently a commission by the lady who ruined that fresco of Jesus, the whimsical watch's Siamese cat is a masterstroke, that is, a master created by a recovering victim 
of a stroke. In theory, this watch is no worse than the common house cat itself, but combined with the application of what can only be described as a deliberate indifference to the entire medium of art, this arse biscuit of a watch couldn't be any worse if it were coughed up by the cat itself. The highlight of this piece would easily have to be the absent stare of the namesake cat, whose vacant expression sits somewhere in the rarely explored artistic world between mashed out of its face and bad taxidermy. Taking inspiration from two of humanity's most celebrated moments, Christmas and the COVID-19 pandemic, this bejeweled coronavirus celebrates the precious use of our eyes by offering a horrifically stark contrast between literally everything else on the planet and itself. Never has a tree seemed so vibrant and green or a bird in flight so elegant and majestic as immediately after viewing the mayor's lady diamond. As well as sounding like the discreet way for a lady of class to describe her need to defecate, excuse me, I'm just popping out for Maya's Lady Diamond. It also looks like wearing it might actually give you a disease. You might forgive it for being a silly fancy, but the Mayor's Lady Diamond is no mere trinket. Those are real gems, diamonds, sapphires, and pearls affixed to this abominable creation. What do Aerosmith, Steven Tyler, and Oscar award-winning actor Nicolas Cage have in common? Well, it's a little-known fact that both actors are, in fact, completely blind. Through some clever Hollywood trickery, this unfortunate handicap has been expertly hidden from the public, the use of sound cues and an otherwise distractingly bad performance masking the true obstacle. The truth of the entertainer's reality was only discovered upon the revelation that both men chose to purchase of everything available to them in the Rolex catalogue, the infamous Daytona 116598 Sacco. Not only is the Sacco so bad the Middle East doesn't want it, it also comes dressed in a lovely leopard print strap that's so horrific even Peter think it should be destroyed. Given Rolex's tendency to typically produce stern, stoic watches with no discernible personality, I can only assume this is what happens if you force your designers to swallow their creativity and bottle it all up for too long. What could be better than raiding a mass grave for your next watch, than raiding a mass grave and then moulding it into a watch that looks like the produce of Satan's own backside? This is a conundrum the good people at Romain Jerome face when creating the Titanic DNA Checker, a watch so unholy it could turn the Pope atheist. Created by French artist André Checker, it was apparently designed as physical proof of the statement that indeed anything could be art, even if that art does leave you feeling like you wish we'd given up on this whole humanity thing several million years ago when we were still drawing stick men on the walls of caves. Kudos to Romain Jerome for giving Checker the opportunity to make this watch, however, because presumably they did so knowing full well he was also the creator of this next and last and worst watch. As an artist clearly inspired by things he found in his ear, Andre Checker appears quite determined to never make any money ever with his creations. If the Romain Jerome felt too mainstream and safe for you, however, there is also this thing. Inspired by the gunge era of 90s Nickelodeon, this watch was created to make a statement. That statement being, do you want to see what I just caught in my handkerchief? As well as being the single most ugly thing ever held on by a strap, a strap that looks reassuringly flammable. It also contains a movement by the legendary Christophe Claret. That's like putting a Ferrari V12 in a bio waste bin outside a hospital. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I had a lot of fun making it. If you found any hideous watches you think should be in this list, let me know in the comments down below. And please do like and subscribe and catch me over on the Watchfinder channel too. Thanks, and I'll see you next time. What do Aerosmith's Sith... <laughs>